Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger for Envato Tuts Plus. In today's tutorial, we're going to be creating a drippy splat animation using the liquify effect in Adobe After Effects. We'll look at the basics of how the liquify effect works, and I'll show you kind of a few different scene scenarios of how it can be used. Before we get started though, I do want to mention that you can download the project file for this tutorial that includes all the animation scenes I'm going to be creating today, and you can download that from the Envato Tuts Plus blog post for this tutorial. I'm also creating a few different glass texture backgrounds that we included with the project file as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. All right, now that we're inside of After Effects, I'm going to come down here and create a new composition. And I'm just going to rename this Main. And I'm going to have it be 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And I'm going to make the duration here just about six seconds long. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to come here and select the Text tool and just type in some text. And I'll just kind of center this up a little bit here. And with the text selected, I'm going to come up here to Effect. And under Distort, I want to find the Liquify effect. And now we can go ahead and start applying some, kind of some drips off of this text. I'll show you the basics of kind of how to do that. And so now under Liquify effect, we have a variety of different tools. We're mainly going to be working with the Warp tool, which is this first tool right there. And you can see we have all these different options that we can kind of toggle down and adjust. So the first thing I want to do is create like a normal type drip off of this S, then we'll create like a thicker one and then a thinner one, and we'll kind of progress animation as we move through this. But what I want to do first is kind of establish what the final drip is going to look like. So I'm going to come here to brush size. I'm going to bring this down to about the width of kind of one of these letters here. I think right there at 20 looks pretty good. I'm going to bring the brush pressure all the way up to 100. And I want to make sure the distortion percentage is on the default 100% right there. One thing I want to adjust before I actually distort this though, if I'm going to start right here on this S, I'm going to come over here and you're going to see the distortion mesh offset and you'll see a little target there. I'm going to click that and I'm going to place that kind of above where I'm going to be distorting, maybe right in that area and I'll kind of distort below that. And the reason for this I'll explain a little bit later in the tutorial, but it'll give us a little more versatility if we want to make any changes later. So just make sure you adjust the mesh offset there. And now that I've went ahead and done that, I'm just going to select the warp tool again. And now I'm just going to click and pull down and kind of create this drip here. And you may need to click and drag a few times in order to kind of stretch this out. And kind of the secret to this is, is now you can kind of come in here and click around the edge and kind of just punch in to create kind of a little bit of a wavy look onto this drip. And you can even cut it off there and create like an extra little bit off the edge. And so I think that's pretty good for our first initial drip here on our text. Now if I zoom in here, you're going to notice that these edges are pretty jagged and the anti-aliasing on this effect is not very good. And that's okay right here at the beginning because what we're actually going to do is we're going to apply a rough and edges effect to our text. I'll go ahead and demo that really quickly so you can see it. So I'm going to come over to effect. I'm going to come down to stylize and you're going to see rough and edges. And just when I apply that, you're going to see this kind of gives us more of a liquid, kind of almost like a cartoony uh, look onto these letters, but I think it looks a lot more natural and you can see it kind of gets rid of that anti-aliasing issues that we had. They're just kind of common with the liquify effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that rough and edges effect for the time being, just know that we are gonna apply that at the end. So now what we need to do is we need to apply another version of the liquify effect. So I'm gonna come up here with my text selected, come to effect, and we'll go down to distort again and liquify. I'm just gonna to toggle up this first liquify effect that we created. So now I want to select the warp tool again at the top. And for these options, I'll create the brush size a little bit bigger on this one. And I'm going to set the pressure all the way back up to 100. And for the distortion mesh offset, I want to make sure I put that wherever I want this to distort from. So I'll put it right about here on the L. And now I can go ahead and distort. So I'm just going to click again and drag down. And you can see it's a much thicker drip there. I'll come in here and kind of adjust around the edges. And really, this is up to you and whatever creative freedom you want to apply to this. I think that looks pretty good. So now I want to apply the liquify effect again. So I'm just going to come over here to Effect, Distort, and Liquify. And we'll do another more narrow one over here on the side of the T. So I'll select the Warp Tool, toggle down the Warp Tool options. I'll make this one a lot smaller. And the pressure all the way up to 100 again. And I'm going to click on the Mesh Offset, place it kind of above right here. And now we can go ahead and kind of animate that dripping down. This may take several more clicks when you're dealing with a smaller brush. I'm going to zoom in here so I can see this a little bit closer. Just trying to roughen that up a little bit. 
And also the reason we want to use multiple liquify effects is so we can keyframe them all separately. If we did all of this on one effect, everything would kind of uh, drip down at the same speed and it wouldn't look as natural. So we'll kind of get into that in just a second. But finally, I want to do one more liquify effect on this and it's going to affect the entire text, kind of like it's sliding down gradually. So I'm going to toggle both of these back up and come up to effect and distort and liquify one more time. And I'm going to select the warp tool and for the tool options, I'm going to increase the brush size here quite a bit, really to cover the entire text. That may be a little bit too big. So something kind of like that. And we can leave the brush pressure for this one at 50 because I don't want it to be too extreme. And I'm just going to click and drag down a little bit here. You can see how it's kind of making the text look like it's just sliding down gradually there. So I think that looks pretty good. Now we can see what this text looks like with the final rough and edges effect applied to it. So I'm going to select the text again and come to effect and stylize and rough and edges. And you can adjust the scale right here to really kind of control how big and gloopy the text actually is. I like to set it around 140. I think that looks pretty good. And it kind of gives it a good, nice kind of cartoony look to everything. So now what we need to do is animate the various drips from this text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with the current time indicator and set it right here about the 10 frame marker, just so we have a little extra room in the beginning before it actually starts kind of dripping down. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the first liquify effect. And what, the way we're going to animate this is using the distortion percentage right here at the bottom. So you see if I click this and drag, you're going to see it's going to make that drip go all the way up when it's at zero. And then we can bring it all the way back down to 100%. So we can just keyframe that in order to kind of create that animation. So what I'm going to do is set that distortion percentage up here at zero. And then I'm going to click on the stopwatch here to create a keyframe for that. And I can hit U on the keyboard with the text selected. Now we can see that keyframe. And I'm just going to move down here to about the one second marker now. So about 20 frames further down. And I'm going to set this to be about 100%. And so now I can kind of toggle and scroll over this. And we can see that animate. But one trick that I've learned with something that's like dripping down like this, it's going to drip initially a little bit quicker and then kind of really slow down gradually at the end. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move back a couple of frames, probably about five or six frames. And right here at this area, I'm going to come up here to the distortion percentage. I'm actually going to type in 90%. So that'll create a keyframe. So we're at zero and then we're at 90 and then all the way to 100. So the last little bit goes a little bit slower. And we can do two things on these keyframes to refine this and make it look even better. So I'm just going to go ahead and control click on that keyframe and it should turn it to be round. And that's an auto Bezier keyframe there. And on this last keyframe, I'm going to select it and hit F9. And that'll create an easy ease keyframe. So now let's go ahead and preview and kind of see what this looks like. So now we can see that drip down. You know, it goes a little bit quicker at the beginning and then kind of slows up at the very end. And I think it looks pretty natural and it's a good look for this effect. So what we really want to do now is just essentially copy these keyframes and paste them on the other liquify effects that we have. So I'm just going to click outside here and just drag and highlight all those keyframes and hit control C or command C on a Mac to copy those keyframes. And if I go over here and I toggle down the various effects, you're going to see the effects and you're going to see all the various liquify effects that we have. So I want to set my current time indicator back here, right at that first initial keyframe that we had for our liquify effect, our first one. And I'm going to select the second one. And I'm just going to hit Control V or Command V on a Mac to paste those same keyframes on that effect. And we're going to select the Liquify 3 effect. I'm going to hit Control V to paste those again. Again, Command V on a Mac. And for our fourth Liquify effect down here, I'm actually going to come up here and select it. So I'll close up that first one. Select the fourth one. And this is the bigger overall kind of slide down. And this one we can keyframe a little bit differently. So just make sure you're lined up here at that same point where the drip started. And I'm going to set the distortion percentage there. I'll create a keyframe and set that to be at zero. And then I want to move down here to about the two second marker. So a little bit further down and keyframe that to be 100. And I'm just going to hit U on the keyboard to show those keyframes now. And on that last keyframe we created there, I'm going to select it and hit F9 on the keyboard to make it an easy ease keyframe. So now you can see the keyframes for each of the various effects. Now right now they're all kind of timed out the same and we actually don't want that. So what I recommend doing here, again, if you can't see this, just hit U on the keyboard and you'll see all the keyframes you've created. I'm going to offset these just a little bit so they're all not quite as uniform. The initial drip can start the same, but the endings, I want them to be a little bit different. So I might select this one on Liquify 2, maybe move that down just a little bit. And on this one, just kind of just 
move it around just so they're not all ending at the exact same time. And really that's up to you to kind of create your own look. So now let's go ahead and RAM preview this and see how this drip looks. So there we go. Now we can see it starting to slide down. It looks pretty organic. I think that the big liquify 4 effect, the big kind of slide down is happening a little bit quick. So I want to refine that and adjust it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do with that is on that last keyframe for the liquify 4, kind of the big overall drip. I'm going to move that down another second to about the three second mark. Something else we can do to kind of set off the animation for this splat effect is kind of have it come toward the screen really quickly. And so what I'm going to do is set my current time indicator right here, right around, right around where all the liquify effects first start. That's why we left this little gap right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the text, hit P on the keyboard for position. I'm going to come over here and check it on to be 3D. So it's actually in 3D space. And we're going to create a keyframe for position right there, right at the 10 frame mark. And I'm just going to move back probably about three frames or so and just move this back in Z space. So if you can see if I go ahead and push this in the positive, you can see it's getting a little bit smaller. So I might set the Z space value to be 1000. And again, it's just kind of moving it back a little bit. It's gonna kind of move up very quickly here. And on that first keyframe, I'm gonna select it, hit F9 to make it a little bit easy E so it kind of eases in to the speed and then stops very abruptly. And with that entire text selection, I'll hit U on the keyboard to show all the keyframes again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have it in probably two frames after the initial drip starts to occur because it happens so fast that it really won't be that noticeable in the beginning. So now you can see we have our text sitting back here, comes up and then splats and then starts to drip down. So let's go ahead and ramp preview this now. So now we can see that splat effects occurring, it impacts and then kind of drips down. And if you want to adjust the speed even more, you can still do that. And a quick easy way to do that is just to click and drag over all of the keyframes and then hold Alt on the keyboard and then click on one of the keyframes. You can see it's gonna kind of adjust the overall speed of everything. So if I wanna stretch it out, I can pull it out, or if I wanna, or I can put it in closer and have the drip occur much faster. Let's go ahead and preview this real quick. And you can see how that increases the speed of the drip effect. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and make it still be the normal way we had it before. So now we've created this, let's go look at a few other ways we can kind of refine how this looks. And the first way is applying a gradient ramp to this text. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up these effects. I'm gonna select my text, come here to effect, generate, and select gradient ramp. And you can select two colors of your choice. I'm just gonna go ahead and select two colors that I usually use kind of for this effect. I like to set it to be two different contrasting colors. And what we can do is we can set the start of the ramp to be right above the text and the end of the ramp right here down at the bottom. And the colors will kind of blend together nicely when the drip occurs. And so what we can do here is kind of set this up. And after you have it on something you like, actually select the gradient ramp effect and move it to the very top. And then we'll see the liquify effect will actually kind of blend those gradients together. And you can continue to refine this with your gradient ramp effect. And you can also swap the colors on the gradient ramp effect if you'd like as well. The next thing we want to address, if you zoom in here, you may see a little bit more jagged edges because of so many liquify effects that we've stacked on here. And we can get rid of this pretty easily by applying a very gradual blur onto this. So with the text selected, I'm coming here to Effect and go down to Blur. And we're going to apply the Gaussian Blur. And I'm just going to set this to a value of like 2. And that'll blur it just enough to kind of get rid of those jagged edges. Right now the paint actually looks pretty thin. It doesn't actually have any depth or thickness to it. And we can apply a bevel to this to make that look a little bit more 3D. Before we do that though, I'm actually gonna hit Control Shift H on the keyboard. Now to get rid of the 3D outline that was around our text there when it's selected. That way we can just see this a little bit clearer. So I'm gonna come here with the text selected and go to Effect and come down to Perspective and select Bevel Alpha. And you can see now we get this little bit of a light edge around the text and kind of makes it look a little more gloopy like it's got a little more depth to it. I'm gonna set the edge thickness here to be four. And that's about the max. I'd recommend pushing this before it kind of breaks the illusion there. But you can see this adds a little more thickness to the text. We can make the text look even more liquid-like by applying the CC plastic effect to this. So with the text selected, I'm just gonna come here to layer and come down to pre-compose. And we're gonna select move all attributes into a new composition. I'm just gonna name this splat. And click okay. And now with that composition selected, come to Effect, and come down here to Stylize, and you're gonna see CC Plastic. 
go ahead and select that and you're gonna see it already kind of gives it more of a liquid type appearance on this effect. I'm gonna come up here and toggle down all the options that we need to adjust. For the softness, I'm gonna set that to be 35. And for the height, I'm gonna set that to be 67. For the light height down here, I'm gonna set that to be about 40. And I'm gonna come down here and do a few adjustments on the diffuse and dust. I'm just gonna bring those up a little bit to like 35 for each one of those. And this may be a little bit slower to render now. The CC plastic effect doesn't render the fastest, but uh, it does make it look a lot more kind of gloopy, drippy-like. I'll go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this. Now we can see the overall end result of how that effect looks. So it looks pretty nice. And just for good measure, I'm gonna come here to the project panel. I'm gonna drag in a glass background, just place it behind there to make that look a little bit nicer. However, because of the way we set this up, we can easily adjust the text and the drip point. So if we come back in here to our splat composition, just double click on it to open it up. We can select the splat text and under our effects here, if I come down here to the distortion mesh offset, we can actually offset where that drip occurs on each one of the letters. So I'm gonna select the offset target and just come over here and click on another letter. And now you can see that's moved over to the other letter and I can do that for any of the liquify effects. That was our reason behind uh, positioning that right above our initial drip. So I can just reselect to move that around. So it's super quick and easy and we can even adjust the text. So I'll just come here to the text tool and I can go ahead and highlight the text, type in something else. And now you can see how that text has adjusted and we still get the drip effects and we can reposition any of those again that we'd like. And you can see how that makes it really easy for us to customize this effect. I do want to very quickly show you a couple other scenes that will be included with the project file and other experiments that you can do with the liquify effect. So I'm just gonna come over here and show you a couple other scenes. So in this composition here, it has more of an impact animation. It's a lot quicker and you can see how the splats kind of shoot upward and really in all directions, kind of like it's higher velocity. And you can do that again with the liquify effect. It's the same technique. You're just kind of distorting it in a different area. And you can go ahead and see the results of that. Another composition I have here is this kind of underwater composition. And we're using the liquify effect to kind of distort the text and then it kind of fades in and then fades away. But we're offsetting that text again using the liquify effect. And you can come in here and hit U on the keyboard. You can see all the keyframes for that animation, but it essentially uses the same animation techniques that we did for the drippy logo. And finally, I have this cartoon composition. All I did here was use the twist effect of the liquify effect in order to create that. And again, we can select that, hit U, and it's gonna break down that effect. And that's utilizing, again, the kind of a twirl effect here, right there. And that's how that was animated. So it's really quick and easy to create some nice kind of text abstract animations using the liquify effect or if you wanna do a drippy impact logo, that kind of thing. All right guys, hopefully you picked up a few tips using the liquify effect in After Effects. Again, make sure you download the project file from Envato Tuts Plus. That'll be on the blog for this tutorial. This has been Charles Jaeger. Thanks for watching.